attracted you to Aldo? Uh, first thing when I spoke to Mike uh, and the board, um, just the vision of the club going forward. Um, obviously, it's been a hotbed of rugby for many, many years, and uh, you know the, the actual process to get us back to that um, league where we should be uh, really, really push push me, and I didn't have to really think about it. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned about Oldham being a hotbed of rugby. Obviously, lots of players from Oldham but never seem to actually play for the club, you know, they, they go to Warrington or Huddersfield. We're trying to sort of change that now, is that some of that you're wanting to do as well? Yeah, 100%. Uh, like I said, there's many, many players who I could speak about, you know, the, the Skullthorps, you know, Matt Lee's doing a great job at, you know, at, at St. Helens, and they just produce so many good players. Uh, and that's the vision going forward. If we can get up to where we want to be and uh, in the top flight, then, then hopefully, fingers crossed, we can keep those players, you know, in our community and you know, on board with us. Yeah, and you're coming in on a three-year deal. Um, obviously, to this season is to be winning the title. But beyond that, have you got a, a, a thing in mind where you want to where you want to be in year two and year three. Have you thought that far ahead? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, obviously we want to win the league next season and get. We've got a very good squad. Uh, we want to win the league next season and get promoted to the championship. Uh, then we we'll reassess again. Uh, it's a tough, tough league. The championship. We know that, um, but hopefully with the recruitment, what we've done, and then we'll do some more recruiting next year uh, for the year after. Um, the vision is to go all the way. Yeah, and what about your coaching philosophy? Give us a sort of insight into what a Sean Long team looks like. Um, we have very high standards. Um, you know, even though we're in League One, we're not preparing and training like a League One team, you know, we'll be we'll be pushing them all the way and like I said we have high standards. Um, the lads will probably drive that and make us everyone accountable. Um, but you know, I, I defend it quite aggressive, you know what I mean? And then when we got the ball, you know, we like to throw the ball around and uh, play what we see. So the license for the lads to to see something that it's on, you know, I want them to go out there and express itself. Yeah, and Boundary Park's pretty, a pretty large, wide surface as well, so that'll suit us, won't it? Yeah, it will. Obviously, you know, we need to lay the platform with our big forwards, what we've got, and we've recruited really well. Um, but we want to give our outside backs the ball as much as possible and, you know, get, get the fans engaged and uh, play some entertaining rugby basically. Yeah, and obviously you've had a brilliant playing career, but when it were coming to the end of your career, was coaching something you always wanted to go into? Yeah, to be honest, it, it was always straight into coaching. I probably could have gone around again and carried on playing, but got offered uh, to coach, I think it was in 2012 now, uh, Salford with Matt Parrish, uh, he offered me the assistant job and you know I've kind of never looked back really so obviously been on some great coaches, worked with some great coaches and uh, it was always something I wanted to do and I've been doing it like 11 years now, nearly 12 so um, I feel like I'm uh, quite experienced. Yeah and those assistant roles, uh, the, you know those clubs you've been at, what have you what have you took from there to sort of mould your own coaching, you know, style? Yeah, you take bits from everyone. Um you you take bits and you and you take some bits what you really like and then you take some bits what you don't like. Um so you know what I mean, I've learnt off loads of different coaches, Richard Agar. Um, and I've worked when I played as well at St. Helens, um, worked under some great coaches there, Ian Millward, uh, Ellery Anley, but the probably one I'd stand out to me was uh, Daniel Anderson, you know, to bring that team together and go on a, 
a winning run what we did and when the treble uh, was outstanding so I take a lot of inspiration from Daniel and, and then he kind of I kind of mold myself towards Daniel um, I, like I say I work with France which is uh, Trent Robinson he's a very very good coach and uh, picked his brains up quite a lot when I was in camp in the world yeah I was with Samoa and uh, the Samoan uh, group was great. Um, worked on the Matt Parish again. That to give me my first job, and um, you know, working with the Allen boys and uh, a, a good day. Uh, um, you know, some serious talent in that squad, and uh, you know, I loved every minute. When you were a player, like obviously you've been under several different coaches. Uh, in terms of yourself, what would you say is a what makes a good coach like? What would you want off a coach? Yeah, I just want clarity off where we're playing. You know, <clears throat> just have a simple like, a system in defence, how we want to defend. Um, have a, a system in attack, how we want to attack. But kind of then give the free reign to the players then to go, go out there and deliver because I'm on the field at the time. Yeah. So we're going to have a, a really tough, hard pre season. Uh, put some good systems in place uh, and then when they went there on the field then they've got real good clarity on how we're going to play. Yeah and obviously uh, this year, well the, the upcoming season, we've we've got, we're going to have three assistants and <laughs> all of them are sort of not used to, you know, such a coaching setup. Like how will that relationship work and of, I'm assuming each will be doing different things. Yeah, yeah, obviously I'll be heading it up and, and uh, first of all we need to implement the defensive system how we're going to defend uh, and the attack how we're going to attack and then uh, once we're all on board with that and uh, we all understand that then they'll have all different roles and they'll probably add up their, their role in these different departments in the unit so you know, for, for JT, he'll, he'll, he'll be learning, he's, he's a young coach, he's just starting off, so he'll be learning, but once he gets the hang of it, he, you know, he'll be flying. So, uh, you know, I want the boys in the three different coaches type role, I want them to bring some ideas to me as well. Not It's not just my ideas all the time, I want them to bring ideas to me as well. And uh, if, they, if it's better than mine, then, you know, well, that should be that. Yeah, and when you're in the head coaching role, obviously, you was at Feverston not long ago. But in terms of like, how much time you dedicate to it, like, are you always thinking about that? Like, when you go home and you finish, can you actually switch off? Or? No, no, I can't <laughs> switch off from rugby, uh, unfortunately. You know, when I was coming here today, I was up at past four thinking yeah. about stuff. So, uh, yeah. Um, your mind's racing all the time, how you can get better as a coach, as an individual, you know, things what we can work on, on the field, on the practice field, uh, and, and ultimately get better each each game and look at our flaws or look at our, our positives as well. So, you know, keep working on the good things and, and obviously trying to, you know, work on the things that we need to uh, address. Yeah. Um... You know, let's say a few games into the season or whatever. Uh, obviously, we've got a very strong squad, competitive squad that everyone will say, you know, I warrant a starting position. Or those players. Obviously, we've only got so many positions. How do you handle that, and how do you sort of keep everyone on side so they're not thinking, right? Do I want to go elsewhere, or you know? That's the difficult one as a head coach, you've got to make choices um, what's best for the team sometimes and it might, you know, not, might upset someone, you know, and ultimately it's probably it's going to upset someone sometimes, but I think it's what's best for the team, you know, and I'm just, I'll just be honest with them, I think the best advice I've got as a, as a, as a coach is just be honest with them and why they're not playing and uh, but ultimately during the season every player in the squad is going to make uh, have a major part of the play in, in winning the comp. Yeah and when you've been a player in those successful sides winning trophies and whatnot 
what has made them successful? I think we just bonded together, you know, as mates as well, on and off the field. And uh, every session we turned up, you don't want to turn up to work or to training. Um, well, we want them to turn up with a smile on their face, uh, enjoy it. Um, first of all, you've got to work hard. That's the main priority. That's my coaching philosophy, is you work hard first and then you enjoy it second. So we want our lads to turn up with a smile on their face and enjoy training. And uh, and I think that's the key really, is, is get them on board and make sure that you know we're, we're all enjoying training each day. Yeah. So how do you make them want to come into it? Obviously if we're winning, you know, everyone's buzzing anyway, but beside that, how do you create that culture? Yeah, you obviously we've got quite some experienced lads out there, you know, he's been there and done that, so I'll sometimes be leaning on them a little bit to go out there and explain to them. Um, but, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll train a little bit different, so it's more game related, so even though we're training in practice, it's more like games as well. Yeah. So we're not just, we, we play a lot of games and not just conditioning a lot. So um, I think I think that's the way forward. And like I said, it, there will be some tough decisions and questions I've got to offer the players, but uh, it's good for me coming in as fresh, yeah. you know, with a clean slate, everyone is on, on par with each other. And, and if someone impresses in, in, in training in pre-season, then they'll probably get the nod. So it's just all, all like I say, about working hard and enjoying ourselves. Yeah, and your playing style, um, when sort of maybe we're going through a rough spell, do you stick to your guns or do you think, right, we'll just tweak this here and there? Is your, have you got other, you know, is, have you got more plans than just that? Yeah, yeah, you, you've got to have plan B if someone worked your way in, in, you know, in your system and they work your way, then you, you'll, you'll have, you always have plan B, you might have plan C. So you, you can switch from one attacking system to another uh, attacking system. Um, and then also defensively as well, whether we want to be super aggressive or, you know, we might just give up a couple of yards just to get the ball back. But I think all the hard work gets done in pre-season and we've got quite a long, long pre-season so it'll all be implemented then and then when they come to the season it, there's not much you can do really they, they know the systems yeah. and then you can tweak a few things you know um, with, with some set players and, and, and like you know um, trick players basically yeah. yeah and in terms of your relationship with the players are you you're the head coach, so you, there's a bit of a distance. But in terms of that, are you? Do you want to have a distance so that there's like you're there and they're there, or are you very much involved in the in the players and the not you know, are you friendly with them and stuff like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm on zone, hundred percent. I don't want to put myself up yeah, there yeah. And, and that. Obviously, the standards have to start with me. Yeah, I have to set the standards. Uh, and then I'll filter through from the coaching staff and stuff like that. But I'm no, I'm very hands-on on the field. Uh, and then, like I say, uh, that that's where I'm at my best really is coaching on the field. You know, I can watch games on laptops for yeah. hours and hours. But you know, ultimately, it's what I enjoy. I'm always learning. Every day I'm learning. It's, it's the games keeps changing, and if you don't adapt you know, season by season and, and start picking up things, you, you know, become stagnant. Uh, so, you know, I've got to have different clubs, whether it's rugby league, rugby union, football, anything I can pick up um, in where they're doing the stuff, whether it's just delivery, whether it's, you know, um, meetings, how we set up, um, you know, how we train. Um, it will be a bit different to what they used to because I don't think some of them have done quite the stuff I'll be bringing in, um, but it's enjoyable. Yeah. And what about you've got a couple of players who you might might be low on confidence or something? They might be going through a bad spell. What do you do to them players that you know to refine their form? How do you sort of do that? Yeah, you put your arm around them. Sometimes, sometimes you know you they need a, a 
and arm around them to actually get the best out of them and, and maybe go back and show some footage like of what they were doing when they were on form and, and, what, and ask the question why they're, they're not feeling so well or not playing as well. Uh, we'll go back down to that and just just have an honest conversation with them and uh, and, and make sure that they're all right, you know, mentally as well. Yeah, and aside from that, obviously we're at Boundary Park today, but the facilities are, you know, some Super League clubs don't have this, you know, this standard of stadium. So that's exciting for the fans as well. And you coming on board, there's a big buzz about the club you know, going forward. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, like I said, one thing that attracted me is, you know, you know, the vision what the club has, obviously the facilities, what we've got, the players, what we're signing, uh, and, and the, the, the end game, which is probably, you know, one, two, three years. Yeah. That's why I've signed a three year contract, because I want to be part of this journey, what we're all going on. And then, well, fingers crossed, we get all the fans on board and then, they can uh, come down and we'll go in the communities and stuff like that and, and I'll be here full time and um, you know they, they, we really want to get the fans on board just so they can come and watch a good brand of rugby.